All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. Today is Monday, March 7th, 2016, 1 o'clock Eastern Time, and this is Admissions Live. I'm your host, Chris Dorso, and on today's live broadcast, we are talking about relationship building, specifically between us as college and our students, and we are going to talk with Bob Longmire and uh, Rick Montgomery from Longmire and Company, who, and yes, Rick has just joined us. Yay, technology! Uh, just a that? minute about <laughs> a large uh, national higher ed uh, survey just completed uh, called The Relationship Dynamic, How Prospective Students Form a Relationship with Your College and Why It Matters in Your Ability to Grow and Control Enrollment. Admissions Live, of course, is part of the Higher Ed Live Network. Uh, we offer viewers direct access to the best and the brightest minds in education. Live webcasts allow viewers to share knowledge and participate in discussions around the most important issues in the industry. Today's live viewing experience is powered by Maestro, the premier marketing tech platform for broadcasters. All the episodes of Admissions Live are free and accessible in the video archives uh, at higheredlive.com and in podcast format uh, on iTunes. Today's episode is made possible by Chegg Enrollment Services. Chegg is the student marketing firm backed by Data Science. With today's talk focused on how technology is changing the landscape of student recruitment, Chegg is excited to announce that the next edition of the Social Admissions Report will be released soon. And if you saw uh, the special Higher Ed Live show last week, uh, that uh, was a great preview of some fantastic data that they had. Uh, and so you can visit edu.chegg.com slash insights to stay up to date on everything going on there. Higher Ed Live is also produced by M. Stoner. M. Stoner is a marketing and communications firm that works with higher education institutions on branding, strategy, web design, and more. Do you agree that market research is one of the most important components of a brand strategy project? Without a solid understanding of how your audiences currently perceive your brand, it's difficult to strike the right balance of reality and aspiration in evolving your brand positioning. And M. Stoner has a free webinar coming up on March 22nd, which will outline strategies and methods for conducting brand research at education institutions. So there's a link headed out from the Higher Ed Live Twitter account that you can register for that uh, webinar on the 22nd. So uh, welcome back to a couple of guests that I had on last year, and we had such a good time, we figured we'd do it again. So please welcome uh, Bob and Rick. Bob is the president, and Rick is the senior enrollment strategist at Longmire and Company. Longmire uh, helps public and private colleges recruit students more efficiently and effectively. And one of the ways that they do that is by conducting uh, these big national higher ed studies to inform colleges about new and different insights on how students and parents arrive at their decisions. Uh, this is, of course, a very interesting time for all of us in higher ed in the enrollment land where uh, our decisions are out or getting ready to go out and we put the ball in the hands of uh, our students and, and to, uh, to take a look at, at what our classes are going to look like. So uh, how we build those relationships is so very important. So uh, welcome uh, to Bob and Rick. Hey, good to be with you. Cool. So, um, so this is now. Uh, oh, by the way, so if you are, if you do have questions about this, and we're going to try this to be as interactive as we possibly can, we've got a quiz question. Uh, we've got quiz questions to go uh, today, so it should be a lot of fun. Um, so uh, use the hashtag Higher Ed Live and uh, and or hit us uh, at Higher Ed Live on Twitter, and we will uh, take uh, take questions as we go. So this is now uh, the seventh national study that Longmire has conducted in higher ed, and what led to this uh, this study this time? Well, before I say that, Chris, let me just tell people that unfortunately there's no Nissan's been giving away, being given away in this quiz show that we're going to do. We're going to have a lot of fun, but there's no cash and prizes, unfortunately. And so, okay, then I'm leaving. All right, thanks for coming, everybody. We'll see you all next month on Higher Ed Live. Yeah, unless you're ready to offer one. You, got, <laughs> oh, you, right. you, you don't want to, okay. All right, anyway. Um, this study that, about relationships was really born from a study that we completed in 2014. We've been doing these national higher education studies since the economy crashed in 2008. Our college clients were saying, how is this going to impact us? And so we started doing them back in 2008. And every one that we do, it, it generates some additional question that really demands some further explore, exploration. And when we did this excitement factor study in 2014, what we uncovered was when any human buys anything, they are really factoring in three primary components. The cost of that thing, the perceived quality of that thing, and their excitement about having it. And it doesn't make any difference whether it's a car or a college. 
people have a tendency to factor in those three things. And what we learned in that 2014 study was excitement as a component, as a driver of predicting enrollment. Excitement had was more strongly correlated to likelihood of enrollment than either cost or perceived quality. Uh, and when we explored excitement and what causes excitement, one of the things that we learned in that is, is that the relationships that prospective students establish with the college, whether it be admissions counselors, whether it be a professor at an open house, it could be a friend, it could be anything. Um, all of those things add up to a relationship that a student feels uh, with a college, an affinity towards that college. Um, we do a lot of counselor training and one of the things that we always stress to them is prospective students will tell you uh, what they want, but they're going to make their decision, their college selection decision based upon how they feel. And so that's why we wanted to get into a deeper dive on how are these relationships generated. And that's interesting because you know it, it's you talk about those those three factors: cost, quality, and excitement. Uh, there's you can you can control for cost to a certain extent with scholarships and things, uh, and you can control to quality for a certain extent with uh, hey, there's Rick. Uh, you can control yes. to excitement with a uh, rather control to quality. Uh, you know with with your academic programs and things along those lines. It, excitement is something that is much harder to quantify. Uh, you know than than the other things and for a uh, uh, field right now that's so uh, very data heavy and so uh, so so ruled by by the numbers in so many cases, uh, the challenge of of putting some some quantity on that excitement is is a challenge to say the least. Sure is, and you know one of the things that uh, one of the major responsibilities of any admission counselor or actually any marketer, anybody who's trying to recruit student students or having an impact on that is to put students in the places and with the people who are going to enable that prospective student to see what their life is going to be like, to get the sense, the feel of what it's like at that college. And that is a lot of relationship building. And if you don't have those relationships built, your, uh, your ability to recruit that student is a lot tougher. Right. So, um, so who participates in the studies that you do? Uh, colleges all over the country, uh, from the biggest public to the smallest private, and we get we get co-sponsors that are uh, across the country of all different shapes and sizes. They're all four-year public and private universities, and and the reason why they do this is because this is it. This is a national study, but. They give us their pool of students um, that, like in this case, in this relationship study, they gave us their pool of students who were going to enroll in the fall of 2015. And those were their inquiries, their admits, the people who applied but weren't admitted, the people who ultimately enrolled. And so they want to see what's going on with their institution and what's going, how does that compare to the national data? Um, and it's interesting that you do get some variances from college to college depending upon the type of college, but it ends up being that the national data that we collect is reflective of the national data. I mean, the right. national sentiment of uh, people across the country. Cool. So, um, cool. so what, was there any sort of major takeaway from this latest study? I would say one of the biggest takeaways was how important relationships are. Um, a lot of times, um, I mean, we're, we've all been in the business a long time, uh, and so we know inherently uh, the various factors that play into college selection. Right. We know that, that relationships are important. That's why we try to create them. That's why yeah. we're friendly. Course, that, that, that's why admissions counselors exist. <laughs> you, absolutely. And so inherently we know that, but when you, when you look at this data, you see just how important those are and how they're created and that helps to guide counselors, it helps to guide marketing people on what their messages need to be, um, but just the importance, 8 out of 10 students said that re the relationship that they developed with their chosen college was influential in their decision to enroll there. And As a matter of fact, half of those, 4 in 10, said that that relationship was the most significant thing 
um, that drove their relationship uh, and drove their college selection decision. <laughs> There's your uh, quantification of your excitement factor right there. That's that's a, a, a very very interesting uh, uh, piece out of that. So um, so let's let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the other findings from the survey, and uh, we're going to do this in in uh, live uh, quiz show format. So let's, let's and unfortunately no car unless you're no, really right. yes, correct. Yeah. charge that to uh, higher ed live. All right, so let's do a little technology, and we're going to bam, ba -da bam. All right, so there we are. So this welcome to the uh, Higher Ed Live Quiz Show, uh, and let's uh, let's let's see what's what's happening. So our first question that we're going to look at: Who do students who do students who do students most often credit with helping them form a relationship with their college? And is that current students, college admissions counselors, uh, folks at their high school, counselors or teachers, or parents? Now, as a uh, on the the admission side of the desk here, uh, I think full credit, of course, has to go to us at number two, uh, and that we're far and away the most important piece of the puzzle. But uh, I would think that it's probably a mix of all four of those in various pieces, uh, and I suppose there's probably different sort of cultural things at play in there. Yes. Yeah, absolutely, and don't advance that slide yet because you're right on. You're on the right track of how most people would think. They would think that uh, the admission counselors are the primary point of contact. They're facilitating the relationship building as much as any of these four. And whenever you're ready, you can reveal the answer, and we'll see. All right. So there are the people playing uh, a role in relationship building. So there, uh, and I suppose interestingly, parents are right at the top. Yeah, and they are, and that really uh, that wasn't a finding that I would have anticipated. I would have anticipated that parents were going to be in the mix, uh, up in that top group, for you know, because we know how important parents are and how influential they are in the college selection decision. But what this told me, and what it says, when you look at all ten thousand plus responses we got from the study, and you look at what they say. They are saying that their parents are facilitating the process of helping them pick a college. They're not just influential, they're facilitating it. And an example of that is how many times does, it happens a lot, uh, uh, let's say it's a uh, mom gets a view book from a college uh, and Mary, her daughter, is away at school. You know, she's at high school. And so she sees this and she sees this college on this view book and she starts looking through it and she goes, this is, this is a great this is, a, this is somebody we need to look at. They're located in a place where I've got my brother and sister-in-law. Uh, it looks like a great school. It's not too far away from home. So as soon as my daughter Mary gets home, what's she going to do? She's going to start advocating. Hey, maybe we should check out this college. Maybe we should go visit campus. Um, she's now in the role of facilitator. Uh, it's influ she's influencing, obviously, but she's facilitating it. Um, we find a lot of evidence where parents are not just influential, they are facilitating the process of picking a college. Um, which made me think as a marketer, which is where my education, my I got a degree in advertising, I have a tendency to think about marketing when I see this data. Right. I think, what does that tell, tell me? What would I do with this data? I would say um, I need a separate but equal track for recruiting parents as much as I do for recruiting students. Why not, for example, ask a student early in the recruiting cycle, are your parents going to be involved in this process? If so, do you mind if we send them some information and material? Uh, can we talk to your mom and dad uh, apart from you on the things that are going to be most influential or most important to them? If the kid agrees with that, why not do it and have a separate but equal track for parents? Use them as a facilitator of the relationship. Yeah, and I would think, you know, especially when we have that off screen share, that we have there I am. So I would think with uh, uh, the financial piece as well, I don't know, so we're getting echo that we're getting before. Let me do this. There I am. So um, I would think with the financial piece uh, that parents would be an important factor as well. Uh, you know, obviously affordability is, is you know, student debt and everything that goes into it, uh, whereas, you know, students may not be thinking about that 
uh, as they're going through the process. It's a matter of, you know, where their friends are going or what they want to major in or whatever. They're not really th necessarily thinking about the financial piece, but parents are certainly thinking about the financial piece in a lot of cases. And so uh, I would think they, they would be a big, a big influencer. They are, uh, and they're, uh, they are. There's no doubt about that. We did a, but an interesting thing in the excitement factor study, the one that preceded this, we asked the question of both students and parents. We said, if another college that you considered initially to be too expensive were to offer you greater value, would you reconsider that going to that particular college at a higher cost? 70% of people said that they would consider. And then we asked it a follow-up question that said, okay, what extra value would you need to reconsider that college that you initially believed to be too expensive? And they don't just say, give me more money or cost less. They give other reasons like if my son or daughter is going to be happier there, if they're going to get me out in four years, if they're going to be going to help my son or daughter uh, find their pathway to, to success when they get out. There's a lot over half of, of students and, or parents and students say that some greater value other than money would cause them to reconsider a college. Part of what parents, is, parents want it for their children is for their children to be successful. If they feel like their child has more of a chance of being successful at, an, at one college over another, they may pay more for that. One of the things that makes students successful is having relationships with academic advisors, with professors, with other students. They're go going to enhance their success. Right. All right, let's move on to our uh, second question, and we are going to uh, see if uh, we've got sound uh, over on Rick. Rick, are you there? Yeah, if you guys can uh, hear me okay, then uh, I'd be happy to take question number two. Yes, we can. So welcome, uh, Rick Montgomery, who is uh, joining us now uh, as well from Longmire. And so let's pop over to our second question. Boom, there it is. All right, so from this list, name the top four communication methods that students credit with helping them form a relationship with a college. So you've got a number of things there. And I would figure that students uh, would... The, the first four, I'm going to say the web, because uh, everything's on the web now. Uh, and I'm going to say email, because email, as I feel like a broken record on the show, is not dead. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, brochures and things, um, because we're admissions people and that's how we think. Uh, and then I, I think I'm basically taking everything, and I think that's cheating, because I'm going to loop everything else together in social and just say that the fourth one is sort of just everything else. All right, well, Chris, I would say, first of all, you are very astute. <laughs> uh, and uh, you can go ahead and go to that uh, next slide if you'd like. All right, there we go. And what you will find is the three that you happen to mention, college websites, email, and um, brochures, letters, and postcards were indeed the top three items that bubbled out. Um, and uh, Bob and I over the years have taken to calling this the big three uh, because we've done, as you know, we've done uh, several studies besides this one and we've asked uh, questions along this line to find out what's most important, what's most influential and these three always seem to bubble up to the top. In fact, one of our prior studies that we did on the effectiveness of various forms of communication um, with the success of email and all of the social media, our clients wanted to find out if they could, in essence, stop sending all these brochures, letters, and postcards, and in, instead use social media in some type of email format. Well, what they found out is the top two were college websites, which came out at 85%, and then brochures, letters, and postcards mailed to their home was uh, 85%. So those two and these three with email have consistently always been um, the big three, the ones that the, the way to, the best way to get started with um, building a relationship with prospective students. Um, now, all of the other ones that are in there, um, you know, their Facebook is important and stuff. And with this study, obviously, uh, each co-sponsor got their, uh, their own data. And the numbers that varied, some schools were using Facebook extensively, uh, other pools were not interested in Twitter at all. Some Snapchat was big and some it wasn't at all. But overall, um, 
what we found was those big three, and we always ask questions to try to get some verbatim responses and to get some real data. And um, the prospective students would go on to tell us exactly uh, what made a difference to them. And when it came to those letters, postcards, and brochures, they said the personal ones were the ones that were most important. In fact, they would make notes of, oh, it was so great, I actually got a card from my admissions counselor on my birthday. I got another one on my high school graduation. So those tried and true methods are still working and still the key uh, that you need to go to uh, every day. Yep, I think that's uh, that's very very important. That it really comes down to that uh, the that personal touch, and so much of that uh, you know is really reflective in the in in the the data there. All yeah, right, so let's move on to uh, question number three. Question number three is name the top three traits students say an admissions counselor must possess to effectively recruit them. Uh, and so you've got listening more than talking. Find out what's important to me. Sincere interest. Knowing all aspects of college, uh, cost and scholarship questions, get me excited, stay in contact, or understand how often to contact me. So this is students saying things about uh, what they think admissions folks should possess. So I'm going to go with uh, listening, uh, knowledge of the, of, 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 well, yeah, I'm going to say listening, Knowing aspects uh, and that excitement. So, is the whole point of this is excitement, the excitement factor. Well, you're close. You're close. Um, but uh, flip the slide and let's. Uh, this was another one of these questions that really uh, shocked me. All of these things obviously are important to people, but look at what's number one: answer costs, loan, scholarship questions. Um, they. It, followed closely by take a sincere interest in me. The sincere interest in me, I mean, that's, I would have expected that and find out what's important to me. That being in the top three, that didn't, didn't uh, surprise me. But the answer every question I could possibly ask you is something that I wouldn't have anticipated. Uh, but it makes sense. Um, I mean, these, these students have taken, uh, they've had many conversations with admission counselors. They may have had you know, five or six campus visits. They've had some experience interacting with everything from admission counselors to tour guides to professors. But when when they talk to admission counselors, when they say answer every question basically I can ask you, including cost loans and scholarships, I'm trying to think why are they saying that? And it makes sense to me when I thought about it. Like, and let me share a personal experience with you that I think will will uh, make the point. Right before Christmas, I went into a local big box store to buy a tablet for my son who watches, my son's 27 years old, he watches everything on his laptop. He doesn't watch TV, he, even though a TV could be 10 feet in front of him. He watches movies, he watches TV shows, he watches everything on his laptop. And I thought, I'm going to get him a smaller device so that when he's in bed watching some show on his device, he can you know, have the uh, benefit of the convenience of a smaller device. So I get online, I do a lot of research in a specific brand, a non-Apple brand. I love Apple because I have Apple, but I, just so you know, this was not an Apple product. I needed <laughs> to do a lot of research on uh, the device itself, how fast was it, um, what was the screen resolution, all those kinds of things. So I walk into the big box store and I ask the nice associate there, I said, do you have this particular tablet. She goes, yeah, there it is right there. But we have a rep from this company here in our store. And I'm not going to mention names, but, and he, you might want to talk to him because you might want to pick a, a different one for some reason. There may be a better option. I said, sure, let me uh, talk to him. So I go talk to this guy and he goes, what are you looking at? And I said, I'm looking at this model of a tablet uh, right here. And he goes, well, let me show you this other tablet. And so he takes me over there, and I go, ooh, this is nice. And, and, he, and I said, now, how fast is this one? Um, what's the processor speed on this one? And he goes, oh, it's fast. People are coming in here and buying this thing, ripping this off the shelf. I said, great, but, I mean, what's the processing speed? He didn't know, you know. Uh, and and I, then I said, well, the one that I'm looking at has a re resolution resolution of 2046 by something else I can't remember what's this one and he goes it's really nice look at that picture <laughs> there. you know and so I'm really getting the sense that this guy doesn't know the specifics of this product 
well, from that point forward, am I likely to trust anything that this guy says? No. Um, I was nice, and he was nice, but I walked out with the one that I planned on buying in the first place. He didn't change my mind. He didn't really give me any new information. I kind of thought the same thing happens in higher ed. Um, maybe a, maybe a uh, student is talking to a counselor, and they, they're asking him some question, and the counselor's not exactly sure what the answer is. Um, and it doesn't make any difference what the question is. A lot of times, uh, students and parents come into the process of college selection very, very informed. And so they may ask some very specific questions. And our sense from this data is any counselor needs to be able to answer any question that is asked to them. Yeah, I think that's, that's a very good point. I had that uh, issue this weekend, actually. I was here on Saturday for our Saturday information session. And I had a student uh, who had just been admitted come up with his dad, and they started asking uh, questions about tuition. And we had had a, a, the tuition hike from last year, and he said, "I know tuition went up, uh, to, you know, X percent last year. And what do you know about the tu you know future tuition increases and things like that?" Uh, students and parents are very, very conscious about that information, and you definitely have to be ready to to respond. Uh, and I per like I feel terrible when I don't know the answer about something. I had a question yesterday about co-ops that was so detailed that I didn't have an answer for. And like I was beating myself up all night about it. I was like, oh, I should have known more about the co-op program. Uh, because it's, it, that per, again, that personal piece, very, very important. Hey, Chris, if you have a second, let me uh, tell you a story about a recent visit that we uh, just did. Yes. Uh, we were actually on a college campus. We worked with colleges and helped them increase their campus visit and uh, um, tour guide experience. So I uh, showed up early and I was basically a secret shopper, a parent, you know, pretending to be a parent that had a son that was going to go there. And I went on a tour and um, had a couple of experiences I just want to share with you quickly. Uh, one, I, as I was going through the tour, you know, just happened to be walking around and I see a nice looking statue there. I go, oh, that's really a cool statue. What is that? And I got, uh, <laughs> had no idea. So, so we keep going, and I, this is just humorous, so I have to tell you. Literally three minutes later, I see a statue that I am 100% sure is Benjamin Franklin, but I was just afraid to ask because if she didn't know, I think I would have laughed out loud and ruined everything. But um, the point is she didn't know. And one other quick example, we then uh, went on and she goes, they, this over here is where they do the financial advising and they do a great job here. We really want to get you out in four years. And um, uh, I know they want to get you out in four job, or, or four years and they do a great job. So that leads me to the question that I'm going to ask is, oh, that's great. Do you know what the four-year graduation rate is? And again, uh, and, and the point I really want to finish up with is, not everybody's going to know everything, but the key is it, just answer it with it. You know, that's a really good question. I am not sure of the exact answer, but when we get back in the admissions office, let's make sure that we get that answer to you so that you'll know the answer to that question before you leave. Yeah, I, they're just students have too many choices now. You've got, got to really be on top of things. Yep. All right, so let's uh, pop back to our slides here. Boom. How, with how many colleges do most prospective students form a relationship with? So now this is uh, you know, what the students would consider a relationship. So those students are applying to, uh, you know, it feels like dozens and dozens of colleges. But uh, from a relationship perspective, I would probably say it's somewhere in the middle there, maybe three or four. I don't know who's taking this one. You going to take this, Bob? Uh, go ahead, Rick. All right. Um, the um, what was your guess? Was three or four? Yes, it was three or four. Okay. Well, you're close. Um, it's actually 41 percent um, have formed a relationship with two or three. So uh, it's two or three as opposed to three or four. So again, being very astute, Chris. But. Um, In Baltimore, yeah. <laughs> that was uh, that was the number that we came up with. So they are uh, because a lot of times uh, there might be a perception that they're just forming a relationship with one college, and this isn't true. They're establishing relationships with two or three different colleges, and those relationships are, are established are through admissions counselors, coaches, and a variety of other people. We'll, uh, if, if time allows, we'll talk a little bit more about that. 
um, but they are establishing of relationships with multiple colleges and the school that does the best job in forming, building, and nurturing that relationship is the one that's going to have the best chance of being able to recruit them. And we'll uh, show you how that works with our very last slide. Interesting. So that's that's another uh, another good stat. You want to you want to be in that group of two or three, I suppose. You know, if students are applying to ah, not really pencil. If students are applying to to multiple schools, you want to make sure that you are near the top of that list as best as you can. And not that that's really rocket science. You know, you want to be near the top of the list. But as simple as you know, being open and, and being personal and, and helping build that relationship can get you on that list. You bet. And if you're a counselor. Um, if I'm a counselor, I'm going to go. I'm going to make the assumption, as this data shows right here, this slide. It's actually 60 some odd percent are forming relationships with two or three. 22% um, are forming relationships with three colleges. So if I'm in that mix, I can just make the assumption that if they're looking at me and I've had multiple relationships or multiple contacts with them, I'm probably one of those three colleges. But I want to know a lot about where do I stand relative to the other two colleges. Why not ask the parents? Why not ask the students? You're probably looking at other colleges, aren't you? Oh, you know, and tell us what you see as how we're different from the other colleges. Uh, do you like one college over another at this point? I know you, you may not have made your decision, but I want to explore and see how strong a relationship do I have relative to those other two colleges. Because in the final analysis, I know that one of those three colleges are going to win their enrollment. And I want to be that one, and I have to find out what factors are going to come into play. Right. Ah, sorry, I jumped to the next slide too quickly. Um, all right, so let's see. So what percentage, oh, no, I'm not on the slide. Now I am. What percentage of students encourage others to attend the college they selected? So I think this question talks to uh, you know, again, the existence of tour guide programs and ambassador programs and overnight visits and all those kinds of things where students are, current students are, are affecting other students. And hang on a second, I recall from several slides ago that uh, uh, current students were, where were they? Boom, current students were second on the list of relationship buildings. So we know that, uh, we know that current students are important. So where was I here? So what percentage of students encourage others to attend the college they selected? I would bet that that number is reasonably high because it sort of benefits everybody when everybody's talking positively about your school. So I would probably wish slash hope that it's in the 80 to 90 percent range. Man, you're you're going to win the car, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, very good. Oh, yeah, well, I don't know. Maybe it's a little model car. I got one around here that's somewhere. Fine. I'll, I'll take it. Fine. Yeah, um, you know that's really interesting. And what we wanted to find out is, again, if a student has finally made the decision that your institution is the one for them, they're going to have a million different reasons why they think that. They're going to feel certain things about you. They're going to know certain things about you. After they've taken it, their last campus visit and they've made their decision because the epiphany just happened for them, they know this is my college. What are they going to do? They're going to go home and see all of their high school friends. You know, and they're going to, maybe their high school friends are going to say, so have you decided where you're going to college? Yes, I have. I know exactly where I'm going to college. And then they're going to tell them all the reasons why they're going to that college. Um, and so who are they? They have just now turned into somebody who can facilitate others coming to your college. They may be, they, you may have turned somebody into uh, a sales force of one on your behalf. You know, we always think, how many, we, how many times do colleges give away a t-shirt? You know, somebody, some student has come to campus, they've had a great campus visit experience and they get a t-shirt. Well, I recommend giving them five t-shirts. <laughs> here's one for you, and here's <laughs> one for your undecided friends. And please, go back and hand them out for me. Because they're going to, if they do that, they're going to go tell other students, hey, I got this t-shirt from wherever, and check it out, man. That, that's a great school. So why not do that? Yeah, I can't, uh, I can't say that enough. I mean, I know that we, we've got a program here uh, in our, at Stony Brook that we, we call, uh, you know, telling the Stony Brook story. And so when students do reach out to us, and we see it a lot, 
uh, in the fall when students are heading back for you know Columbus Day break or Thanksgiving break or something along those lines where they're first semester freshmen and they're having a fantastic experience and they reach out to us and say you know hey I want to go back to my school you know can I bring a stack of brochures with me and hand them out to people and we say yes absolutely by all means and they come in and they'll sit down with a counselor here and uh, you know go over uh, some of the basics about you know the the important things to remember and, and the right way to say things uh, and and send them off with a, a bag of stuff to help distribute to their friends and their high school teachers and, and all of those folks uh, back at home that uh, are, they can absolutely be uh, an influencer uh, on this is certainly no question about that you bet why not do that why not use a you know a, a open up a new sales force for you yeah, and you know, and it doesn't have to be, you know, tour, again, tour guides and ambassadors and all the training that goes into it. I'm not uh, knocking the importance of having well-trained tour guides and ambassadors and all that, uh, but sometimes just a, a regular student who uh, has other has no other affiliation with your office, who is just really excited about your school, can be as big of an ambassador as someone standing uh, outside the fountain, outside the admissions office, uh, talking to families and parents on a Saturday morning. So. Yeah, and, and prospective students. That's one of the things that we learned how much prospective students were turning into a sales force for the college. I mean, they hadn't even enrolled yet, and yet they've gone through it. They have come to the, this emotional epif epiphany that this is my school, and they have a million di different reasons why, and they're going back and talking it up uh, with everybody back home. Everything that we can do to facilitate that process, to measure what impact it may make, um, have a separate program all for how are we going to turn the students who have committed to us into a sales force for us. I yep. bet you they'd yield a whole lot more students by doing that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. All right, let's all right. move on to the next question. question. What, what do, do students, which do students favor most? Number, number of number contacts that they get from a college or the relevance of those contacts? So I would think here it's all relevance. I would think this has got to be very heavy on the relevance side. As much as we want to hit them uh, a million times with emails and, and everything else, I would think that good uh, quality outreach from one person. I mean, that's why we do you know phone campaigns and all those you know the, the overnight one-on-one -on -one visits, things like that. Uh, yes, Chris. Again, you are. You're getting closer and closer to winning that fictitious car. Yes. <laughs> uh, because the it is more about relevance than frequency. And um, it, it, it has been for a while, and this data just proves it out. In fact, um, again, when we ask these questions, we allow them to give us their own comments. And I can't tell you how many times I, I read the word don't bombard me with irrelevant emails and stop, you know, pestering me and I'm being inundated and all of this and the the information it, it's not about how much you contact them, it's about the relevance. And we found this out again in one of our, our previous studies. If um, and again we heard this from them time and time again that I would get five or six or ten emails from a college that I had already told I was definitely had no interest in going. So the, the key here is that it needs to be relevant to the individual and it needs to be personalized to that individual. That is what they want. It's not about quantity, it's about quality. Yeah, and I think that's where, uh, you know, again, that relationship building is so important because you, the more you uh, have that relationship with a student, the more you can make that that personal connection. I think it's something that, you know, I tried very, very hard as a, a as we were a, a new counselor 10, 12 years ago here at Stony Brook trying to build a territory that didn't exist. Uh, you know, I wrote the personal notes and, you know, made notes on the index cards about, uh, the, the inquiry cards about, uh, you know, particular things and follow-up emails that would be relevant to uh, to their particular situation, whether it be, you know, they mentioned a mid an interest in the marching band. Okay, yeah, I, that's not on the card, but I made a note of that on the card so that I could then follow up with a, a personalized email when I get back to the office and say, hey, you're interested in the marching band. Here's more information. Here's, uh, you know, my student who I know is uh, involved in the marching band. Talk to them. They can help get you more information, things along those lines. Absolutely. You bet. And that's, um, look, at the, look at the portion of students on that graph that you've got there. Chris, that scale. It's going back to it. Hang on. Sure. 
There it is. When we asked this question, what we did was we gave them this scale, um, and we said, uh, "Where are you on? Where's the needle fall for you in terms of the relative importance of frequency versus relevance?" And so then what we did was we just highlighted where they pegged. Are that what, what percentage of students are pegged on frequency? That's what's most important to them versus the group of students that are pegged on relevance. And you can see the differential there. You know, 41% say that is really important to them relative to the frequency. And so I think about um, the colleges that uh, send out all kinds of material that it's, they push the button at the beginning of the re recruiting cycle and stuff just starts flowing. And, yeah. they, and their prospective students, their pool gets a lot of contacts from them. Um, however, some, many of them may not be relevant. They could get 40 contacts from one school and they could get one email or one postcard, handwritten letter or something from an admission counselor at another college saying, hey, uh, happy birthday. And as a matter of fact, isn't it great that your birthday falls one week within your high school graduation? Congratulations, signed Mary, hand signed by Mary, the admissions counselor. Um, that one highly relevant, highly personal contact can outweigh many contacts that, that a college may have sent them. Very, very good point. All right, so what percentage of prospective students say their chosen college has a unique reputation or brand identity? Now, uh, again, I think we all think we're all special snowflakes on the higher ed end, and we're all very different from each other. Uh, so, of course, we would say we all have a 100% unique reputation and brand identity. Uh, but I think the reason that students are applying to multiple schools is that uh, they have, there are similarities between us, whether we choose to admit that or not. So I would think this number is probably somewhere in the 50% range, perhaps a little lower. Well, perhaps it is definitely lower than that. Advance to that next slide, you're going to see that wow. 30, just 33% of students said that the college, their chosen college, not just any college, but their chosen yeah, Not just any college, their chosen college did not have, they didn't perceive them having a unique reputation or brand identity. We've, we've captured this data in like the last three studies that we have done, and it's, it keeps hovering around that 30, 35%. The fact is, and students and parents tell us this in their, these open-ended questions where we gather qualitative data, that they have a really hard time seeing the difference between one college and another. They all look the same, their campus tours look the same, um, their brochures and material and processes and conversations all look the same. They really have a hard time seeing the difference. Well, you would hope that even after, once the student and parent interacted with the college, something would change. Their brand identity or their unique reputation would become apparent to the student. I would hope so, or else everything we do is a lie, Bob. Everything we do is a lie. Well, go to the next slide, and you're going to see even after they have a interaction with the college, did anything change in terms of the student or parent's perception of the college's brand identity or uniqueness? And 66% say, no, nothing changed. So that tells me that our processes are all so similar that we're having a very difficult time breaking out and enabling people to see how we are truly unique. So, uh, that's, see, that's uh, both fascinating and terrifying, and I guess not entirely surprising at the same time, too, because, like, again, as I said, like, we are very similar, and, you know, and I think it's important that uh, we recognize that, uh, that we are similar, and I think, you know, if you do go, you know, whether you, you no matter what, uh, you know, information session you're going to go to, you're going to get a lot of the same stuff. It's, it's the question that we get, uh, it's, the, it's the answer to the how's your psychology program question. Uh, well, of course we're going to tell you that our psychology program is fantastic, as will every other uh, college rep that you talk to at, at all of those other tables. The, the, you know, it's the, the similarities really outweigh the differences in a lot of cases. That's right. And would you do me a favor and go to that last slide, because I just want to point that out, because that I want to point some data out in this last slide that's last consistent. Last slide. Let's yeah. go back. A screen share. Oh, my goodness. No, go back. Go back. There it is. Okay. And slide. And share. Yeah, we're running short on time. Okay. Okay. 
Um, I just wanted to point out the differential between the first choice college, the chosen college, and the second choice college. If you're in the running and you're the second choice college, look at the difference between what uh, prospective students say um, about their first choice college relative to their second. There's a big chasm between those two. So if you're competing for a student, obviously on every one of these points, you've got to shine so much and be so much better than any other college in the running because they will see a big difference between their first choice college and which they'll enroll at and their second choice college. I'm just perusing the data and I'm fascinated by it sure. because I think that that's so very like I'm I'm shocked by the uh, the, like the you know the the neither line the fact that they you know the really how important that uh, relationship building really 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 is and, you know the anticipation and the sincerity and the uniqueness and the understanding uh, you know students really want that personal touch and this again is a great data point that really shows that. And it's, you know, it, it goes back to you know, what we said at the outset, that the reason why uh, admissions counselors exist is to build those relationships and it's, you know, it, how can you quantify the excitement factor? How can you quantify uh, that relationship building? And I guess that's it. You, you know, through surveys like this, you can see exactly that. You can see where that excitement and relationship stuff really makes a, a direct impact on uh, students, uh, parents, the, the family college decision. And that's all quantifiable and that's all measurable. Every one of those items that are on that chart could be on an after campus visit tour. Did we move the needle? Where are we relative to your next choice college on every one of those points? You can quantify that. So um, so the, the question then becomes, you know, how can a college measure that themselves? You know, how can, what sorts of things can we do uh, as, uh, do this so I'm not flipping back and forth, uh, you know, how can we do, uh, how can we build that relationship in a measurable way to be able to say, okay, this is, you know, what we're doing matters and, and the personal touch matters for our students because the national data is wonderful and, and stuff like this and the expectations and uh, the, the social enrollment survey, all those kinds of things are wonderful. But to bring it home and to be able to say, all right, at our school, you know, how can we make this impact our world specifically? Well, every student is an individual. Every student is unique. So the first thing that needs to happen is that the counselor and everybody that student comes in contact with has to try to understand what's going to be important to that student. Not only just what do they want in terms of a major or cost or anything else, but what kind of a human being are they? What are they looking for in a college? What kind of an environment? All of the emotional things that needs to be uncovered. And then once that information is gathered, are we delivering that to you at every connection point after every conversation that an admission counselor may have with a prospective student? Ask them, okay, what's changed? Now that, you've had, now that we've had this conversation, are you more or less, you feel like you're more or less informed? Are you more or less confused or more or less uh, clear on what it is that you want? Asking a lot of questions. Um, so in conversation, that's where that can happen. Also, at every turn, like for example, after a campus visit, one, not, rather than just asking them a six question survey, were we helpful, do you like us, and those kinds of things, ask them all those questions on that last slide that you showed. Did we show you, how much did we show you how we're different from other colleges? Um, all of those factors that are on that last slide. You get that kind of information, you're going to be able to know, are you developing a relationship with this student? How strong is that relationship? And is that relationship, how is it relative to the other colleges that they're looking at? So there is, it's, it can be gathered through data. It can be, all be plugged into CRM so that it triggers certain communications that are relevant to those students. There's lots of ways to do it. Absolutely. All right, well, we are running short on time, and I appreciate uh, Bob Longmire and Rick Montgomery for joining us uh, this afternoon. So thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Chris. And, uh, uh, as always, uh, we, uh, our thanks to our program sponsors, Chegg and M. Stoner, uh, and our thanks to uh, Hot Wheels for sponsoring my giveaway car that I just bought. It <laughs> it's a brand new car. Lives up here behind me, but anyway. Uh, so uh, join us tomorrow for a very special Student Affairs Live from ACPA 16. We are in Montreal. 
Higher Ed Live goes international tomorrow. Uh, and then Admissions Alive will be back with my co-host, Nicole Lantini, talking with mobile pros about campus tour apps, and that will be on uh, March 21st, two weeks from today. So as always, thanks for watching. Check us out at higheredlive.com. And uh, this has been, once again, as always, Higher Ed Live.